Biggest mistake we make, number one, we can't make is hips start to rest on the floor. The way that happens is we lose tension between the heels and the hamstrings. That's the first thing that happens. Whereas if I tension everything between my heels and my hamstring, what happens to my hips? They lift up. I can't be down here like this. Um, you can tension here with leaving your hips on the ground. I want to try to keep my hips floating to where they're not on the ground. Because if they're on the ground, there's that added friction, and that allows me to be stuck in kind of one place. Now, rule number one is we want to start, the minute we shoot to diamond, we want to start, okay, with tension in two places. Heel to hamstring, and then knee to knee. Guys, I can't tell you how, 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 how easy this is. Everybody gets stuck and, and wrapped around the axle on, they gotta have this, right here, they gotta be like this, that this foot has to go through the bend of the knee in order for a triangle to be effective, and that is not true. If you can get to this position here, you can finish the triangle. Let me explain to you what the choking mechanism is. The choking mechanism is this side and then his shoulder, okay? It's not this leg. It's his shoulder being crammed into his, into his throat, and then it's something pressuring against the two. It's this right here. Ideally, I do want to have as far down here of a lock as I can get, but guys, I can finish him like this. I mean, that, that's really what it boils down to. So when you get up here, what happens is you create some space here. You have enough space to throw a baseball through right here. If we just remember that this has to disappear, your foot can be way the hell down here at your foot. That's, that's the key. So anybody says, well, my legs are too short. Look, if you can cross your feet up here, then you can finish a triangle. Okay, so first rule is I gotta have tension here. You'll notice how it, it kind of changes his entire, his entire uh, structure here. Head goes up, shoulders go down, because now his back is carrying the weight of my lower body, all of it. So then whatever he gives me here, whatever I can get right here, I'm okay with, I can go ahead and take it. If I can get all the way up to here, great. If I can only get to right here, okay, fantastic. We just gotta come up with a little bit different way to, to put that inward pressure. It is not locking it here and driving your hips up into his, up into his throat. That's not what's choking you. It's this, here to here. Is your neck good? I won't hurt your neck. Either. Okay, so he's gotta carry my weight, number one. All right, and then I've immediately got to start adjusting and putting pressure into this shoulder right here, just with my knee. So what this turns into here really is basically a point of leverage to lever against, okay? That's, that's the key. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take your partner. Remember I told you yesterday, this whole thing across all the way over here, this is not necessary either. This is not necessary. This loosens things, okay? This makes it a little bit a little bit harder because there's more surface area here for me to wrap around. If I just get his arm like this, look, if his arm is up here beside his head like this, look how narrow he is from here to here. But if he puts his arm down here, there's a lot more width there. So I wanna drag his arm up. I always try to drag it up. I don't try to pull it across. The biggest reason I try to drag it up is because I've got second and subsequent submission attempts. If I can get to my triangle, my diamond position, and let's say he's being super, super stubborn, but this arm is long and he's wanting to stiffen up, watch, I can come in off of this side here and now I can start to break that arm there, okay? I can twist it around the back way and I can, I can get him there. I can kick over for a face down arm. There's a lot of stuff I can do with this arm being long here that is not available when it's over here. The only thing that I can hit over here is an omoplata or an inverted triangle, which we'll cover in the next week. Okay, you flexible people are just gonna have a fantastic week. Um, so I lose some options when I push this arm way over here like this, and not to mention I give him kind of a solid thing to push off of. He starts working to get that thumb inside right there and start prying this whole assembly downward, and that's where we kind of lose everything. I wanna keep this hand as far away from the action as I can get it while I'm working up here, okay? And notice, I'm still perpendicular, I'm not offline yet, okay? So, first thing I want you to do is, you're gonna take your partner, 
you're going to stretch the arm out, all right? We're doing just one thing at a time. Stretch the arm out. You're gonna go real shallow. I want you to find the shallowest point you can lock your foot in and generate enough tension to close off over the shoulder and finish the choke, okay? You might not be able to do it with no hands. If you can't do it with no hands, then pull the head down just a little bit, okay? Then go up a little bit farther. You'll notice the farther you get, it doesn't necessarily change the, change the power of the choke. What changes it is how far you can come up on this arm of his and generate that pressure inward. If I can take and insert my leg, even if his, his arm is kind of back a little bit, if I can insert my leg over the top of this part of his arm and get in front of his shoulder instead of behind it, can't tell you how many times I see this as a triangle people trying to finish. This big ass piece of pizza up here, this triangle, is just doing nothing. And my leg is behind his shoulder and I'm just squeezing like hell and I'm not getting anything. I would rather have no lock here and be over the top, over the top of his shoulder and have this low lock where I can start squeezing down now and finish. And you'll notice my leg is here. This is my, my leverage point, okay? I sort of take my foot over it. I'm gonna come over his arm, elongated arm. I'm gonna slide it in until the point where it locks, then I'm gonna turn it all in, and I'm gonna pull down. And there it is. My foot is down here like this, guys. Down here, it's not up here. It's not. I have done more damage trying to finish triangles being hard-headed by being like this, hurting my knees, than I ever have trying to finish like this and tensioning everything out, okay? Far more. So get your partner, lock them up, find that sweet spot, get the back of your hamstring over the front of the, tri of the bicep here, okay? And then I want you to finish. Close, three to one, two, three. Points of lock up, noticing that you don't need to have that picture perfect lock over. Um, it's, it's unnecessary. It's nice to have, but it's unnecessary. So one of the first things that happen in people, they go, well, triangles are difficult for me. Exactly. Triangles are difficult for you because for about the first six months of your, of your, your pursuit through jujitsu, one thing that your body is still learning is those unique patterns of movement that are specific to jujitsu only. Okay. So case in point, triangles require lateral pulling of the leg across across the back of the head back side of the head it's a very unique pattern of movement it's not something that's found everywhere however um the there's a couple stretches and a couple things you can do to really help that that mimic it so one of the things i started doing very early was a standard s mount sit so when i sit i'm always sitting in an s mount position or not always but if i'm if i'm specifically focused on this area of training I'm, I'm sitting in an S-mounted position, and then I will switch my S-mount to the opposite side. Now, a lot of people, when they start working S-mounted, uh, S-mount is huge, right? It's mount, goes to arm bar, goes to all these different things in jiu-jitsu, but what we don't realize is just how important this flexion here in the hip is, being able to twist the leg this way, okay? Massively important. But when people start to stretch this, a big mistake that I think they make is, is they lunge forward and they start trying to like, oh, I'm doing really, really good. Yeah, you're doing good. But you start feeling that where? You feel that back here in your glutes. You're not feeling it here. You're not, you're not recreating that same angle. So when we get ready to do this, put the leg, make your deep S-mounted position, get your leg on a parallel line right here, okay? And then take your body that way. Don't go straight over, go across opposite so it twists that knee down so you're getting to a point where you're, you're you're going across bringing the heel to the chin as best as possible it's a great stretch grabbing laying down this direction same thing can be said for the other way uh, a couple things at home to do that are fantastic one foot on the floor one foot underneath kind of lock up this grip Start trying to bring the toe into the upper upper part of your body, locking down. 
Okay, just good basic pulling the foot down, working on the flexibility, bringing it all the way up to your chest. Okay, that will get where you can grab that leg and you can start tensioning it down and you can pull it down. Now, next, so we have worked on the finish. All right, we did a couple reps here. Shot, hips are off the ground. Okay, I got that, I've got that leg elongated. Now, once I start to work up in here and I've covered this up and I'm trying to cinch the leg down and curl down, okay? A couple interesting things happen here. We can either double up on the head. Remember, I'm turning my knee inboard like this to try to cinch all that up there tight, okay? We can double down on the legs and pull this head, right? Or we have our secondary option is to turn this into a triangle arm bar. Okay, which is probably my favorite. I'm gonna go with a kind of a looser or what I call a passive lock at the top. And I'm gonna go with an active attempt at joint manipulation at the same time. Now that's not to say that I'm bailing on the triangle for any form of effectiveness whatsoever. But what happens here is, is the longer this arm is, if I'm being really disciplined and pulling it straight up, he's gonna wanna get that back. The only way he can get that back is to go skyward. If he ends up going skyward, I'm going to come on the outside and break over the outside of the leg. Notice I kept my lock the same, nothing changed. We're going to go for that break there. Okay, triangle arm bar. So there's my shot. So we're in the same thing. I'm pulling long, right? I'm going to kick up. I'm going to get to my, my solid lock, arch. And he will probably tell you. There's a bite on the head as well. There's some choke and there's a little bit of an arm bar there. Close. Okay. We're gonna work on this arm bar for a minute. Then we're gonna come back. We're gonna explore a different thing on the triangle. Here's a one, two, three. 